Talk. I'm Dixie. I'm Sun. I'm Pyrosin. And I'm Snake. And this week, uh, everybody's been doing their own thing. <laughs> uh, Sen, I guess we'll start with you. You tried to play StarCraft II Wings of Liberty. How'd that go for you? I really did. I, I decided to take my uh, fun time money that I got last week from uh, my foray into Blackjack and just buy the super duper cool box collector's edition of StarCraft II, which just happened to be at the shelf of my local big box superstore. I don't see how anything can go wrong here. Right? Free game? Like, this could be awesome? Um, unfortunately, upon installing it, my graphics card, which is a rather old NVIDIA card, decided, I don't like this game. I'm done with this. You know, one of the largest PC releases for the year. I don't need to play this. And has promptly been causing my computer to crash every time I load the game. Is this the same machine that you played Wings of Liberty on? It is! Not only Wings of Liberty, but Diablo 3, which runs on a similar engine, World of Warcraft, all of the other Blizzard releases, um, regularly play Skyrim on, uh, have played through all of XCOM on. Like, this machine has run its fair share of games, but for some reason, Heart of the Swarm, it says no. Now that's particularly funny, because <clears throat> it, StarCraft2.exe is just one binary at this point. Like, there's not separate program files for right. Wings of Liberty and Heart of the Swarm. Which also confused me why when I installed Heart of the Swarm, which still does uh, load a portion of the map from the Blizzard servers every time you play, why uh, why was it having trouble and crashing? Like, admit it, it, it has been a while since I played StarCraft 2, but I don't ever recall it causing my system to crash. The only time I've even seen an error comparable to what's happening is a few months ago when my computer was overheating due to the heatsink having actually fallen off of the processor. That That's usually a bad problem, yes. Right. So I guess like, I can forgive a computer for failing in that circumstance. Yeah, you know, full forgiveness, I went out and bought a, uh, a heat sink that, is twi- that was twice as good as the one that was in it, and one that firmly, firmly hooks itself up to the back of my motherboard to keep the thing secure. So we've doubled down on this problem, and yet uh, the first thing that the Blizzard forum uh, moderators posted on the thread that was created for people with this problem was, are you sure your computer's not overheating? Which, no, I run a, a temperature scanner on my computer constantly now to keep an eye on it, and no, it's not. So you've had absolutely zero chance to actually play StarCraft. I, I actually have managed to make it through the first mission just from persistence of I will save this game and then I will load it with the anticipation that four minutes from now it will crash. That doesn't sound very fun. Also isn't a great way to keep your computer functional. Just routinely allowing it to crash? Yeah, not a great idea. But through doing uh, this, I did clear the first mission of the game, which is rather entertaining. I mean, I can report that mission one is a success. Hooray! Hooray! Um... Uh, I, I made it through the opening cutscene, which is very cool, which can be viewed online through any video service, um, as well as the first mission, which, you know, it was entertaining to see Kerrigan build a base as a as a test, and then decide, you know, let's make some Zerglings, and let's have the Zerglings rampage just to show them what we can do. I like how Valerian is like, all right, we're going to put you in a controlled environment and give you access to Zerg larvae, and surely nothing will go wrong here. And well, Kerrigan is like... Listen, something is going to go wrong here. Yeah, why are you making make me do this? Wrong. Yeah, I, I don't and then know. Valeria's I thought, like, nah, I, I found it's that to fine. be really enduring for the character. Like, that was Kerrigan making the point of, don't try to control the Zerg. This never goes right. Why are you doing this? Like, valid characterization for Valerian that he is a super arrogant idiot. Well, he's making the same mistakes that his father did. Like, the exact same mistakes. I'll control the Zerg and use them as a weapon, because it works out so well for everyone that gets that theory. Oh, though I guess to be fair, in Emperor Manx's case, it did make him Emperor, didn't it? Yeah, it totally worked great, up until the part where Kerrigan is totally gonna kill him. Is the Zerg Queen nearly took over the galaxy, if it wasn't for the uh, Protoss. She is out for revenge. So, I, I have a few answers for the questions I was posing last week, which is that in the marketing materials, it didn't seem that Raynor is around much. Well, oh, he's, he's there around constantly. Much. Well, he's, he's around in the first mission. Um, he's not around for the whole game. Oh, they send he, him you away? You spend most of it as just Kerrigan, and Raynor is not right there with you the whole time. And you know what? I'm okay with that, because if the game was literally, let's hook Kerrigan and Raynor back up, I would have been really disappointed. Because Kerrigan is a super cool character, and doesn't need to just be shipped with Raynor to continue to be that way. Yep. Like, I actually found the line that he shouted during the opening cinematic, the, I didn't give up on you, you don't give up on us. I found that to be really trite and kind of annoying. It was like, wait a minute, you went and saved this person just because you thought you could get some later? You're a douche. 
So, I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> like, there, there's no argument. Just like, you, the only reason you went and saved this person is because you were kind of, sort of, hooked up with them at the time. The hell is wrong with you? Yeah, that sounds like a, uh, I don't know how to, I don't know how to put that. that douche. That like douche a is a proper term. Fair enough. He is douchey McDouching. But he has such large arms. Dude, everyone in the StarCraft universe has giant arms. Like, I have That's to think true. that these people that they shipped on the other end of the galaxy were just the genetic mutations as well as the criminals. Yeah, I guess you do better in prison if you have big arms, so... Right, e everyone is built like a truck. Including Valerian, the prince. Now I'm imagining that they're all Transformers. <laughs> With the, with the armor, that's a, a fair comparison. Disguise. I mean, that, that said, I do really love the aesthetic style of the game, especially what they've cleaned up in Heart of the Swarm. Like, I love the interface that Blizzard has set up, because that's, that's really pretty much the only thing I can comment on. Like, man, the menus are pretty, because those don't cause my game to crash. <laughs> but, like, there, there's this really cool menu graphic of Kerrigan staying there looking all... Uh, awesome, like she's doing the heavy uh, deliberate breathing, and as she's doing it, she's levitating this little orb thing with her that she's then, like, using her mind to take apart and then reassemble. Like, it's very cool. The in-game engine is rather amazing. That the said, I'd frame. like to play more of the game! That's a pretty disappointing issue. Did it seem like from the forum thread that there were a lot of people having this problem? Um, the forum thread that I've specifically been following, and it's come to the point where I've bookmarked it, is currently on page That's 5. Sad. It's it's five pick dude, I really want to play my game. Like I'm disappointed any time I pick up a game and it's like, well, now you can't play it. I mean it really dissuades me from PC gaming that this is just something you deal with. Well says mister, I have never had an Xbox stop working on me. I did. I've had an Xbox and a PS3 stop working on me. And in which so. case the solution for those was, well, guess I have to get those repaired. The problem is with PCs, there's no one to really repair them in this case because the problem is with the the, it it appears to be a problem with NVIDIA's drivers. That's the conclusion that people are coming to. One solution that was proposed was delete the uh, variables.txt file that StarCraft II creates when the game starts up, which is basically saving your video settings. But that doesn't cure the problem of transitioning between missions and the graphics drivers causing a crash. Well, I guarantee you that there's a hundred little take your computer in and pay us $30 and... We'll look at it and tell you what's wrong and fix it. Shops around your town. There are. You just aren't inclined to go to them. Yeah, but in this case, it's not going to be a problem that someone can fix. It's going to be a problem of, well, replace your video card. Go with a different yeah. company, because it's the driver that's messed up here. That may or may not be true. I mean, there's different versions of software, and there are problems that occur with consoles that result in the same solution, really. I, I don't think that it's really fair to criticize well. the PC as a platform for that failing. I don't know, because, like, with a console, I can be pretty well assured that, you know, because it's all one hardware spec, that I know it's going to work when I pop it in. Yeah, to be fair, the... Barring patches. The, the chances of the console actually being like, well, this version of the console no doesn't out. work well with uh, with what you're doing. Like, I, I've heard of that error maybe two or three times the entire time I've been gaming on the current-gen consoles. Like, I, I remember something of some game, I want to say the first Darksiders having an issue with first-gen Xboxes where it just wasn't working correctly until they patched it. Sure. So I, I can back what you're saying on that. These errors do happen. But they are far rarer on consoles. Yeah, the consoles are just have the more prevalent part where they red ring and stop working altogether. Yeah, PCs do the same. The, because that's pretty much what consoles are these days. They're just toned-down PCs to do one specific thing. True enough. Well, not so much one specific thing anymore now. Okay, they, how much... they, they now pretty much stream and play games, as opposed to just play games. Yeah, true, and that's a, bit, that's a big difference for some people. I mean, people have consoles in place of DVD players and Netflix and other things like that, so... Just saying that consoles are just designed for one thing, and therefore anyone that's on a console has been babied all their life. Just speaking as a person that plays almost exclusively on consoles, I just want to it's say, like pretty much me. exclusively, isn't it? I mean, you have a Mac, just saying. Aww. Are we really getting into this? Okay. Do you really want to start this up right now? Well, I'm only saying that there's not a whole lot of games released on that platform. You don't really have a choice. This seems, uh -huh, uh -huh. This seems you know, like there as is awesome a time for as any to introduce the fact that League of Legends just launched its official Mac client. Actually, the, it's been out for a bit. The trailer... Well, we've, we haven't talked about it. Like, I've been wanting to find an occasion to discuss this, and none have presented themselves where it would be reasonable. But yeah, League of Legends, now on Mac, and the trailer video for it is phenomenal. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. I love the Mac trailer video To be video fair, I only knew about this because, A, I was doing a League of Legends project in my marketing class, which sounds weird. But, um, 
and also that uh, that Snake here is been playing on that. Like, I'm playing I want them to do more style, uh, more videos in the style for other things. I, I absolutely love the League of Legends back trailer. It's Corporate Mundo smashing stuff in the League of Legends lab. And at the end of it, when the uh, League of Legends on Mac logo appears, he just says, no. <laughs> like, it's it's great. I very will... simple, very effective. And they have hints to several other characters. Yep, they they had uh, a hint of the newest champion who's going to be coming out soon, uh, Zack, which is a really lame name for a champion. Yeah. Well, that's I mean, your first generation Power Rangers fan. Valor come out. Which, I don't know, we can talk about them if we really want. I want to get point. together a team of champions that just have, like, super boring regular people names. <laughs> like, you'd start with Zack. I think I'd Annie. throw Victor in there. Yeah, Annie uh, would be one. To be fair, Phil. at least, um, at least Victor is spelled with a K. Yeah. And isn't I really a common a name. Eccentric. Yeah. I know I know three people named Victor at school. Really? Yep. I know zero Victors in life. Same here. With that same spelling? Uh, No, no, they actually are not Ks. They are Cs, in my experience. The C, yeah, Victor. Then, of course, there's the ultimate odd straight, straight man named Steve. Yeah, we don't have any Steves in League of Legends, although if I ever, like, win a fundraiser thing to, to name a character, I, I will totally pick Steve the Champ, or Phil. It, it could be Phil. Actually, we'll do we'll do a, a pairing, like uh, Quinn and Valor. Steve and Phil. There you go. It should be, like, a, a, a homage to Special Agent Bob and Secret Agent Steve. <laughs> there you go. Because someone still remembers X-Play. <laughs> someone still remembers Splitter Cell Co-op Theater. Sure they do, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, there's Someone one. other than us. I only know it's because Pixie introduced me to it. I loved that skit. I don't know why. It's amazing. Next she's going to talk about torturing interns. I well, really Snake still can. technically qualifies as an intern. You could start torturing him. I'll get the jumper cables. Uh-huh. Just stick them through our monitors. Surely this will work somehow. Yeah, you guys do that. Tell me how that, how that goes for you. You know, for League of Legends play, I always have wanted a system that would electrocute uh, the people on my team if I just hit a button. Well, you know, yeah, that could almost be that. an interesting mechanic. Like, if you had, like, a mild uh, physical discomfort mechanism, <laughs> I guess it would be hard to enforce that people would actually wear it, but it could raise the stakes on a multiplayer game. <laughs> you know, that actually reminded me of something in the Mass Effect Citadel DLC, where a specialist trainer actually plays a game some kind of virtual video game that actually has that kind of feedback to it that that uh, dissuades you from sacrificing your ships. Every time a ship blows up, you get like a, a little jolt. They quit being bad at your game button. I guess she actually goes into this into this mini tournament and goes against an Asari that she apparently has had a grudge against, and then she blows up her home world in the game, and then the Asari gets this big shock and falls over, and I think she dies because I never really show what happens to her after she gets shocked. So there you go. Specialist trainer kills an Asari after playing a spiteful video game. Terrifying. Yeah, I know. Crazy, huh? Well, I suppose if we were to hook this system up to League of Legends, probably the first place we should use it is just have it shock you every time you type a racist slur in chat. This could probably improve humanity dramatically. Oh, sure. There's always those hopes of actually having people think before they write anything. I remember being in a game where someone just right out told someone else to uninstall the game and go play Solitaire. That is actually a thing. Mm-hmm. That what do you mean, a thing? Like, people that do is that a all common the time. insult, is to I, tell people to uninstall. I don't doubt it. I find it strangely amusing for some reason. I mean, like, it's super rude and nobody should ever actually do it, but, I don't know, just the structure of the insult is... It, it would be well thought out if it weren't for the fact that it's just a meme at this point and nobody has to think of it for the first time anymore. Mm -hmm. But along the lines of League of Legends being available for the Mac, Steam is actually available for Linux now. This is another thing that's a couple of weeks old but we haven't gotten to talk about. I'm pretty psyched about that, because more options are always good. Obviously, this is sort of linked in with the fact that Valve is intending to make consoles based on Linux that run Steam. And it has a fairly small subset of the Steam library of games, but the ones that are available on multiple platforms, you get for free. If you're already bought in, then you're good to go. And that's pretty awesome. Can't go wrong with that. Also see here that Oregon Trail is for sale on the front page of Steam. Yes, these, the zombie rendition of Oregon Trail. Awesome. That's, you know that's... what? I keep hearing you say organ, like you, organ. That is exactly what he is saying. Oh, okay. Organ. That, I thought that you were just mispronouncing pun. Oregon. No, that's the like pun the of state. the game. Okay. Organ entrails. Not quite. No. Okay. No, not quite. Shut uh, up. No, I, I'm I'm enthused about that pun. I'm actually I like it. I'm bullish. All right. We're behind this pun then. Three ninety nine yes, for zombie organ trail. Should probably buy that based on the fact that I just saw it and it kind of looked cool while it was in front of me. You know, despite all the stuff that Valve does with Steam and all these great things they're doing, trying to bring together different games and consoles and trying to make things easily accessible, 
They're still not going to get people to stop asking, where's the next Half-Life? No, that'll never happen. Uh, I mean, it's a meme at this point. I don't know that you can get anybody to stop. Even after it comes out, it'll be like Duke Nukem yeah. Forever. Yeah, it's, yeah, new yeah. Duke, it's a new Duke Nukem Forever, yeah. I was kind of waiting to make that reference. Well, too bad. Good on you. Yeah. Funny I'm, thing. I, I really am a big fan of this Valve Greenlight thing. Like, I think it's cool, because it gets you past the problem with the, like... The app store on uh, on iOS devices, where it's like, I don't know if this thing is actually a game, like a real thing, or if it's just like someone took together the resources of other things and basically put together junk that's for sale for five bucks. Like, at least with the green light, you know that people voted to put it there, so there has to be some redeeming value to it. So you're going by the rule of popularity that if someone else likes it, I probably will too. Well, if that enough people voted to get this put here, and then Valve flat out approved for it to be there, then it's got a better of cha- chance than say the the iOS App Store, where all you have to do is throw down enough money, and Apple will throw anything. Yeah, it's true. I was a little disappointed when I saw a single app which was claiming to be a realistic-looking fireplace, and really it was just a a GIF of a fireplace showing over and over again. It wasn't a very good one either. Right. Is this an application you have need of on a regular basis, Daniel? No, I just go through regular... Also, wait, not temple. use his uh, tag there. Uh-huh. Th- this is like the billionth time I've done that, and <laughs> is intentional. Mm. Yes, well, to answer your question, no. It's just sometimes when I'm not really sure what to do, I'll just go cruising through the app store just to see what's ha- what's hot and what's not, basically. What's the apps? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Pixie, I know that you're the host and the founder of this enterprise, but you're fired. I will okay, admit that my family for. has totally used a a fireplace television channel last Thanksgiving and just put it up on the flat screen. It's like, look, there's a fireplace on the TV. Yay. It was kind <laughs> of endearing. I, I am enjoying this trailer that I'm currently watching for uh, DLC Quest, a game that is openly mocking the current uh, method of delivering extra content for your games. So basically you're collecting coins in-game that you're then having to use to buy the resources that you need to finish the levels. So huh. the first power you start with is the ability to walk right. And Basically, you walk right, yeah. you collect like three coins and you get to a vendor. And from the vendor, you buy the ability to walk left. <laughs> you this proceed sounds through... brilliant, at least once to play through. That concept does sound interesting. I would be willing to give that a play. Uh, the in-game purchases are things like having an animation, having <laughs> sound, being able to jump. I, I can totally get behind this idea so long as they're not actually making me pay real money for these things. Like no, the indeed. joke, the joke is totally worth it. As long the as whole package is only two forty right now. So yeah, I, I love the concept. I love what they're getting at. Also, I think we need to discuss another announced release this week before we move on. Move on to What's what that? I don't know, but move on in general. So let's let's talk. And Pixie and I have already discussed this to an extent. Let's talk Saints Row Four. Ooh, Let's talk cause... the next great Holy sequel in the Saints Row franchise. Crap. You guys okay. have no idea. So have both of you already seen this trailer? Because I know Pixie has. <laughs> I have not actually seen it yet. All right, we're taking a short break while we watch this. The one thing that I know from this trailer is that the boss has been elected the President of the United States. Yep. And that is clearly the best thing ever. And it's just going to get crazier from that. I do love the music on this trailer. Just screams, I'm awesome. The whole game screams, I'm awesome. Especially the robot uh, guards doing the robot dance. No, see, when THQ went under, like, I was really worried that nope, it wasn't it... going to, that it was going to not really find people who would understand the... The point of Saints Row? I, I guess I was looking for another word, but kind of. No, it appears that the franchise is in wonderful hands. Like, the heart of it, you know? Yep. I was worried that someone was going to, like, clean it up or something. Ha <laughs> ha, they can't do that anymore. Alright, so I have two revelations coming out of that trailer. The first one is... Does it have anything to do with Assassin's Creed? <laughs> maybe. Fortunately, no, because, man. No, maybe. I, I have explained a thing to Pixie relating to the end of Brotherhood and where it went just recently that makes me glad that Saints Row and Assassin's Creed are not terribly interrelated. Am I the only one that didn't really like Assassin's Creed and therefore didn't get into the franchise that much? Uh, I actually yeah, could all. give less than a crap about the story, and here comes the hate mail. But, um, but I actually love the like gameplay of like just running around ancient Italy and like looking at the pretty set pieces and stuff. My whole problem was just with the whole horse sequence and the fact that you go more than a gallop and suddenly you're under arrest and it takes you forever to get to wherever the places you want. Precisely nobody liked Assassin's Creed 1. 
except for me, but I'm the person who liked Mass Effect 1 better than Mass Effect 2, so clearly I have no right to talk about taste. Um, but yeah, uh, everybody thinks that Assassin's Creed 2 is a huge step up and improves on those particular aspects you cited. Not so touchy with the notoriety system anymore. But yes, I've always said that the animations are far and away the best part of the Assassin's Creed series. Yeah, yeah, taking those leaps of faith is, like, super fun. It is truly moving artwork is what it is. But really, if the coolest part of your game is just how the character moves around, I I don't want to dedicate that many hours to playing through it. Like, eh, like we, I said, it's, it's the free running and all of that. It's got really pretty set pieces, and I don't know how to... Which is probably why Watch Dogs looks so good, because it kind of looks like Assassin's Creed, uh, you know, the look and the feel and the moving engine, but just with a different concept. Right, I mean, if we're talking which that I'm, kind of play experience, I got more out of playing Red Dead Redemption than I ever did out of any of the Assassin's Creed franchise. Because that was a beautiful open world that didn't take too long to introduce me to the mechanics, that let me go free roaming. That was also a beautiful game. I, I also like that, but again, it's the same thing where it took a while for me to warm up to it. Fair enough. Um, okay, two things about the Saints Row trailer. One yes. of which is that this is super awesome and I am totally hyped and heck yes. Two, the title block at the end did not say the next great sequel in the Saints Row franchise, which has totally broken my heart because I want so badly for that to be the title of this game, you guys. <laughs> like you don't even know. What? That, that I, I want to this be game the to be titled, title? to have written on the front of the box art, the next great sequel in the Saints Row franchise, <laughs> because that is the just game. amazing. I, I do like that it seems like the people who picked up Saints Row uh, Volition seems to get the idea that, yeah, we it's can go ridiculous. crazy. It was it Coke just... Media that picked it up. Volition was always the developer. Okay. You know, but I this never is actually exactly what Saints Row just happen. does not, like, care what you think about it. <laughs> It does. I I have never actually played a Saints Saints Row three, but it seems to me almost like the entire game is basically if you took an entire uh, video game world and populated it with nothing but Deadpool, and that's what you get. That's not a bad description. Yeah, actually. no. De Deadpool's universe would very much fit in the Saints Row universe. That's just the overall feel I'm getting from what I've heard about it and what I've seen in trailers and demos. At it, one it, point in Saints Row three, you play as a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it Saints Row. The idea is. Let's take everything fun about Grand Theft Auto you, you know and what remove it felt like all the boring bits. From, from the trailer of Saints Row 4, it felt like to me like they went, they they looked at all the mods people made for Saints Row 3, and then went, hey, we could just put that in the game, why not? Yeah, let's just do that. And that's brilliant. Just give people what they want. If they're doing that themselves, fine. Don't care. Let's run with it. Superpowers? Mm. All of them. We don't care. You're Superman. Just punch someone into orbit. It's okay. Well, Pierce can now literally kick someone in the crotch and launch them into space. Like, I'm hoping that is his only superpower. Like, only that one very specific action. The history of this game is that it was originally going to be a DLC for Saints Row 3 titled Enter the Dominatrix. And it all takes place in virtual reality, which is why everything is totally ridiculous. Not that things weren't totally ridiculous in the real world, but you know. Um, and so know, at some point like they, they decided it. that they wanted to move it from being the DLC to being a full game. And involve an alien invasion somehow, because that's a thing. Pretty standard. Uh, as a result, it kind of looks exactly like Saints Row 3. Yeah, it's definitely running on the same graphics engine. But, but I'm I have okay no with this. to that. Yeah, I I'm very pleased that this is the direction that this franchise is going in. I, I can only hope for as much from THQ's other franchises. Anything in mind? Um, I would like to see the Darksiders franchise continue. I think that's super sweet. Uh, Darksiders is dead, dead, dead. Nobody picked it up. Nobody's developing anything. There is no more Darksiders. It doesn't mean that someone won't Paul pick it up in the future. Crushed. Well, what else can you do after you've already done, you know, death? Well, there's still two more uh, horsemen that we never got to play as. And actually, the female one, which I was kind of looking forward to. Fury is kind of cool. Yeah, but what are you going to do, do with disease or pestilence, whatever you call it? The, uh, those the, are actually not the other horsemen. Yeah, the, they changed confused. it. They changed the what? Strife. As you can tell. Is the strife horseman. Yes. Which sounds do, basically and... like war, if you're going by the technical definition. It, it's war, but so, less shooting involved. So what does Strife do? Just go around making people jerks? I don't know. We haven't seen him in-game yet. Like, we, we've seen an outline of him. I don't think we actually physically got to see Strife in the game. 
Um, maybe he's that, just a silhouette. That maybe later in Darksiders yeah. 2, I haven't gotten to play through it all the way. Uh, I know he's made an appearance in the comic book. Let me do a quick image search. I'm really disappointed that they changed the other horsemen because Nerd I talk feel like uses it would be the internet. interesting thing to just go from death and war and be like, well, I guess we got to do famine now. Strife so is a ninja. Yep. Now you play as famine. Strife is quite literally a ninja. Okay. As to a figure to ninja. I or a will... flippin' ninja if you're playing League of Legends. Not that the flippin' ninjas do much flipping. Yeah, no. I mean, but... I guess some of them do. But after Probably playing Death, doesn't anything animation. else seem kind of like a backstep? I mean, what? They d I just don't really see what else you can do after that. I mean, mind you, I never played either of the games, because the whole concept just seems so damn silly, but... <laughs> I think that was kind of the point of Darksiders, that like Saints Row, it was taking the action game and just going, eh, let's go a little crazy. It's fine. So, I don't know. Along the lines of games where you have put yourself in a place where there is nothing left to do, I might be wrong about this, but at the end of Gears of War 3, didn't we totally annihilate all of the locusts and lambent? Ah, and but that's the fun thing. Yeah. yeah, but that's the fun thing here. When in doubt with anything else, just go before. Prequel. Gears of War Judgment. Gears of War Judgment is a prequel. Prequel. You know? The lazy uh -huh. way out. Yep. Oh. You said it so knowledgeable when you said that, though. <laughs> what? I don't know. It's just like I don't know how to say this without sounding weird. Oh, go ahead. It's like how Walter Cronkite. You know, anything you said, you just kind of like trusted him to know that it was true when he knew what was going on. Absolutely. Fair enough. It's just, the way, it's just the way your, your intonation there was just like, I totally believe everything coming out of your face. You can trust me. I won't lead you down the wrong path at all. Say, would I don't you know look how at this wood chipper for me? Uh-huh. But no, Gears of War Judgment, it's a prequel. So, h how much of a prequel? Are there still locusts? Is, oh, there's plenty it... of locusts. Plenty yeah. of locusts, plenty of lambent and all that fun stuff. Correct me if I'm wrong, but are we technically playing as Baird this time around? Oh, we're not technically playing as Baird. We're literally playing as Baird. Okay. Yeah, no, that that is the one thing I know because I can see playing as Baird in um when I'm watching your uh, Xbox Live status. Well, also so that's literally all I got. <laughs> well, also you can see him displayed rather prominently on the cover of the box. I, I wasn't <laughs> sure if that was him or not. It is him. If you didn't, if you couldn't tell, it says I right on the back. I haven't seen the box, so there we go. Well, well, it has a picture I just of a list of things I don't know enough about. Right. Well, yes. Yeah, so well, the box has a picture of Baird in the very front. And off to the back again, a young coal train, and uh, I think the other one's Anita, whoever that is. The one token female, in this case. Is yeah, it a token, not Sarkeesian? Token. What? Uh, no, it's not her. But, uh... Well, what else, what can you really say about Gears of War? It's, um, the ultimate in testosterone-fueled shoot 'em up games. And to be perfectly honest, I was never really interested in them very much. Because as I've said time and time again, I'm very much into a story. I mean, I've got no problem with shooting enemies as long as I have a... Yeah, I think your sister was more of a fan of it than you were, as I recall. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, he yeah here's the thing. I like, I don't have a problem with shoot 'em up games. I just like having to know why I'm shooting the other person. Like Mass Effect, you knew why you were shooting all these people, or why you had to fight in these certain circumstances. At Gears of War, in the very first game, what happens is, you're in a prison. They break you out, hand you a gun, we gotta fight stuff. And boom, you have to go start shooting things. Who are they? Where they come from? They're an alien race, apparently, that just started taking over the world. Okay, then. There's probably more to the to the entire world, or probably more to the building, or I don't know, maybe you have to look into the backstory, I'm too lazy to do that. Yeah, but Gears is, isn't the strongest backstory as far as the franchise goes. It, I mean, Gear, Gears fans, feel free to write in, we'd love to hear from you. But Gears yeah. has a little bit of halo-osity to it with respect to how there's... More story than is in the game is by a right. significant margin, but not a lot of Haloosity because, like, there is a little bit more story than is in the games, but it it bottoms out at a point. Halo, you can just kind of keep going down, but Gears of War, there's like one extra gallon of milk worth of story after you leave a game and go on the wikis. Right. There are novels for Gears. I'm sure those have to have additional backstory, because he shot something and then hid behind a chest-high wall, and then he shot something again. It would get really boring. Although I kind of want to see that happen now, because it sounds hilarious. I could probably write you're that. Saying, I just you're have saying to copy that just because you're a big fan of Mark Reed's. Just yeah. because you want to send it to him. You just have to copy and paste. He walked, or he crouched behind the chest-high wall, shot something, and then moved forward to another chest-high wall. Just copy and paste that a few thousand times. You'll be fine. Occasionally broken up with the... They have a little discussion before things blow up, and he has to get behind a chest-high wall. And then a cutscene started in which he declared, We have to go. And then they came across Are, are we watching The Last Airbender now? Yeah, similar. They in had any to case. shoot a gallon of gasoline in order to make a fire so it oh, wasn't oh. dark so they could walk. 
And and then they killed Dom's wife. No tears were really shed. And then they were forced to eat Sir Robin's minstrels. And there was much rejoicing. Yeah. I thought you said something else, Pyro. You know, I thought they said something else the first time I watched Monty Python and the Holy Grail, so you and I are on the same page there. <laughs> okay. At least I'm not the only one. So what else? Yeah, many. What else we got hmm? in this cluster mess of an episode? I appreciate your restraint. Yup. Well, in any case, as Pixie mentioned the fact that, yes, my sister is actually more interested in Gears of War than I am, mainly because she's kind of the polar opposite of me in that the less story, the better. She simply wants to get the gun with the chainsaw and cut things in half, and then shoot them and then cut them in half again. So your review this week brought to you on part of Snake's sister. Mm Mm-hmm. Grats. Because, yeah, because lo and behold, two days ago, she saw she did not know that this new Gears of War was coming out, and when she saw a... uh, commercial for it on TV. She screamed, comes into my room and say, oh, are we going to get this? Are we going to get this? And I'm like, yes, yes. I totally forgotten it was coming out so soon. Until she barged into my room demand near demanding that I get it. See, Blizzard, this is what happens when your games don't. We end up with no content. What? Uh, he was making a joke at uh, StarCraft's expense. Oh, okay. Nerd Talk's quality per episode is really one of Blizzard's biggest concerns per their games working or not. It should so. be. Have you tried using an old me. video driver? Because that'll make the rest of your games work just fine. Thanks, Blizzard. Great solution to a tired old problem. He's just not going to let this go, is he? Nope. Okay, do you just want to keep going on that ranch or something? Fine. That's fine. Like maybe just your sister will next week, not be I'm reviewing a... Blackthorn. Mm-hmm. No? That's right. Um, I'm going to hook actually... up my Super Nintendo and we're going to review Blackthorn. Um, uh. Actually, I've got the demo for the new Army of Two game, which is coming out, I think, next week. Oh, yeah. Does that have local co-op? It does. Uh, they usually do. Um, it's the only game in the entire world that still has local co-op, because it's in the title. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look this up real quick. I did have I, a little. I actually did get into a little bit more of the actual game, or if we, or if we just move on. No, go ahead. Tell me about. No, Gears no, no. War, I say if we're good, if, we, if we're good, we say if we just want to move on to that, that's okay. Uh, yes, Army of Two Devils Cartel um, can do two-player local split-screen or online co-op. If an Army of Two game abandoned local co-op, that would be like the largest disgrace the industry could have in that regard. Because it, it is be literally sad. the merit of the title. Like, hey, it's two player. We put it in the name. Yeah. And I, I I'm sure I've said this before, but I flippin' love local co op. Local multiplayer in general, but local co op especially has a special place in my heart in to to the point where I'm like, you know, I might pick this up just on virtue of that. Makes sense. And it's one of the things that's like, you know, a, a nice little bonding experience. Uh, Snake and I play Borderlands 2 together. Yeah, and I can't deny that's all... screen local co-op. Yeah, I can't deny, despite my not my lack of enthusiasm for Gears of War, it is something that me and my sister get to play co-op together. And it's fun just to listen to her whine every time she has and to play one of the female characters. I understand from an industry perspective why folks have been getting rid of local co-op, but it still sucks. It's very, very sad. I don't like it. So, both Borderlands and Gears of War are not necessarily strongly narrative-driven games, but everybody says that the key element of one of those games is just the feel of the controls, like the basic loop of aiming and shooting. And how did you feel about the the controls in Gears of War 3? Mm, sorry, I got distracted for the other thing. Say that again. Uh, Snake, we were asking you how you found the controls on Gears of War. I found the controls in Gears of War. Well, first I had to look on the couch, and then I had to look <laughs> under the sofa cushions, and then if it wasn't there, maybe it was over on the end table. Snake, you're fired. <laughs> so, all right, you said that your sister is in this for the chainsawing. How much chainsawing is there? Oh, a fair amount. Okay. <clears throat> well, as for the controls, well, I, uh, you guys meant it. This is uh, not Epic Gaming. Epic Games doing this game themselves. They're actually outsourcing to people can fly. And they were previous, and they were best known for what were their games again? Painkiller, and Painkiller Pain. is best known for being totally insane, such as having a lightning gun and stuff. So mm-hmm. uh, I know that a lot of people were excited that maybe this Gears of War game would be a little more insane than most of them are. Well, yeah, I, I can understand, and also, well, super mega guns would actually be a very good staple inside a Gears of War game. But um, <clears throat> well, I didn't. There were a few changes already with the actual game with the. Not just the controls, but the design. The actual controls of crouch, roll, shoot, zoom, and such, those were all basically the same. Um, a key difference is that I know in previous ones you've been able to hold uh, four guns, well, one grenade, one pistol, and two other guns, but they've changed that now to which, you're only, which you only have two guns and grenades. So it's pretty much Halo now in the, in the amount of ammo and guns you can carry. 
So instead you just switch back and forth between your guns, and instead of selecting grenades to be thrown, you actually use the left bumper and either press it to throw real quick or hold it down to get the usual, uh, the usual chucking, the usual aiming that you would have. Uh, which I, which I personally appreciate because I really hate having to select grenades and then aim and then throw, and it, it just seemed needlessly complicated and extended the game too much. Yeah, and the the bumper weapon change binding is pretty standard for modern shooters, and you ha somebody. Listeners, you have to go look mm. this up on the internet because it is kind of amazing. But if you just hammer on the weapon change oh, yeah, bumper, the it animation sucks. for your character swapping out his gun for his other gun is so rapid. Like, it is detailed. It has all of the physical parts of putting away a gun and getting a gun out. But it takes, like, like 250 milliseconds, and it is just crazy. Well, I this is something else that kind of, that kind of bugged me about Gears of War the first three games, and this is going to sound really ridiculous, is just that they were a little too realistic looking. I know that sounds a little weird, but it was a little, it was kind of like the Uncanny Valley effect. Just everything just looked like they were trying to be too real. Or maybe it was just too grainy or some, or too much brown. I don't know what it is. It's just the overall grit and look of the game kind of bugged me. But with Judgment here, it still has the overall look and feel of a Gears of War game, but it seems a little bit more stylized. Like, there's a little bit... There's a little... Um, they're allowing things to have a little bit more of a of a softer side to them, a softer edge. There's there are actually some bright, vibrant colors. I know at one point, at the very beginning, you're firing and that tree bursts into flames, and it's really well so detailed. So it's more than brown. Yes, there is more than brown. There's still a large amount of brown, but there's actually other colors now, which I'm very grateful for. It looks, I, it's a little bit more stylized, but still has that bit of realistic look that Gears of War is best known for, and I really appreciate that personally, because. Uh, I just don't know what it is. When something looks a little bit too real but doesn't quite get it, then that just kind of bugs me. But now this little bit of extra color they've added into and a little bit of softer edges on things, it, um, I don't know, just seems more aesthetically pleasing to my, in my opinion. And I didn't, and, and I noticed the quick change between the guns very quickly, very, like instantly, but it didn't bug me at all. I was quite appreciative of that too. I mean, I guess I can compromise on that part, because I've always been an advocate for detailed weapon animations, but this, the animation has all of the detail in it. It just is superhumanly fast, and I guess I'm okay with that, because it means you're not wasting time uh, during the gameplay. Mm-hmm. <coughs> but everything else that Gears of War is best known for, you know, the beefy marines taking quick cover, rolling out of cover, moving very, very, very slowly, even when you're jogging, or even when you're moving fast to something, and it's all still the same... Um, though the characters are actually quite a bit smaller than I remember, because in other Gears of War games, all of your dudes are pretty much just tanks. You're just rolling around, and you're like, my shoulders are like six heads long apart, and I just have, I am just this huge dude. I guess in the story, they're younger because this is a prequel, and they're also smaller as a result. It's like, oh, little cogs. Kind of adorable. Yeah, perhaps that's the case, but, um, but... It, Again, everyone is still freakishly large, because <laughs> that's something else that always bugged me. I don't know anyone that has hands that big or that beefy, or anyone that, hey, it's, I think it's another one of those just bizarre game designs that I just can't fully comprehend at times. But no, there's no shortage of overly beef characters here. Yeah, when I say that they are less super proportioned, I mean they're still ridiculous. They're just a little less ridiculous. Well, maybe they'll beef up later toward the end of the game. I don't know. It's it's possible. Possible. I don't know if your sister is of the same opinion as me, but I find that kind of gross. They're mm -hmm. like of that ridiculous, like Hulk esque proportions. Never bugs her. The only thing that ever bugged her was whenever we were playing Gears of War three, and she was the second player, and so she would usually get tasked with playing the girl in any in any given group. She would play as Anya or that other girl that was in there too. So that always ticked her off, for whatever bizarre reason. I don't know. All right then. That that's the thing, but um. <sighs> Did we manage to get you back in the call? <laughs> All right. No, okay. Well, I was trying the, to write a message to ask you if it worked, and you ignored me. So I thought I would confirm mm -hmm. my audio. There is there is something else that they've added on. Well, there's a couple of things they've added on here. Um, <clears throat> and that apparently for the multiplayer, you get to pick. You get to have like you choose from different uh, cog members: uh, Baird, a younger Cole, or an older Cole. A younger, you can even. And since I pre-ordered, I got to I got to Phoenix. A younger version of Phoenix. Um, it seems like you can actually customize the look of your guns. The actual insert whichever. obvious Jean Grey joke. Uh huh. You can customize your look, or at least the sol the particular soldier 
soldiers look. Again, I think this is all for multiplayer aesthetics. Mm. You can have, there like, are a all couple of your... things added to multiplayer. There's also one extremely critical thing removed, which is that there is no horde mode in Gears of War Judgment, and I can't even believe it. Huh. Like, Gears of War pretty much invented wave-based combat as we know it today. And Firefight exists because of Horde Mode, and Mass Effect 3 multiplayer exists because of Horde Mode, and it isn't in Gears of War Judgment. Hmm. I don't really know where to go with that, but it's like, that's a foundational feature of the series. And for something that is a little light on story, but theoretically shows its strength in just the shooting loop of aiming and shooting, something... That is very heavy on shooting and infinitely replayable, like wave-based combat, named horde mode. It seems really important. True, what are the multiplayer the modes? Mass- hmm? Well, I haven't been able to get into any of the multiplayer yet, <clears throat> so I can't really answer that question. You have to look it up. Okay. But, um, again, it seems like you can pick whichever cog you're fighting as for whatever particular versions of the multiplayer you're playing as. But, yeah, if there's no horde mode, that that is a little bit confusing. I mean, I guess they're expecting you to have, you know, be doing co-op in the <clears throat> in the main campaign, which seems a little weird because you only can do that so many times before it gets very, very tedious or obnoxious over and over again. But that's something else. They've made a few cha- they've made a few changes to the campaign in that in how you can play it. because uh, they've added in this thing called declassified files, because the way it all starts out is I don't know if this is how the game's gonna go the whole way, but Baird and the rest of his team are under arrest. And what's happened at the very beginning is his testimony of what occurred and what's leading up to them being arrested. So what you can do at certain points in the game is you come across the giant Gears of War symbol just spontaneously spray painted on the wall or something. You go up to it and you hit X and you get this option to uh, play a declassified mission in which you are like uncovering a part of the story that was hidden up in official that was covered up in official files or something like that. Like there was this, this specific enemy in this given spot. So if you accept it, then the game pr- the you get an extra goal as opposed to the normal go to this place or kill this person or whatever. You get something else in addition to that. So it can make the game harder, but you don't have to get that. You can just play it straight through as the orig- as the initial uh, task at hand is, or that you can just play the original task at hand is given to you. I know at one point one of the ones said that. You have to complete this mission in four minutes because the building you're in has been set for a Hammer of Dawn attack. So if you don't finish in four minutes, you're all dead. But again, you don't have to do that. But if you do, it like uh, increases your experience points. You can level up and get more stuff to use in the multiplayer, <coughs> which I think is an interesting, co- which I think is an interesting idea in that you have this option of uh, changing the way you would do the campaign, but it's all optional. At one point, you have the option of doing this specific level using only. <clears throat> using only locust weapons, so no la- no chainsaw lancer or no uh, typical shotgun. I, I, it's um, so it's kind of like achievements in that it changes the way that you play the game, other than you normally would, putting little handicaps on you. That sounds pretty I, sweet. That's something I can definitely respect. Something that forces you to play the game differently, but it's not an but it's not a requirement. You can say, Nah, I don't want to fight those enemies, or Nah, I like the gun I'm using, or Nah, I'd like to take as much time as I like on this. So you don't have to, but it, you, you'll level up faster, and it actually is rather rewarding just to be able to, you know, go through an entire room full of, like, four boomers and three grinders and be able to do it in just four minutes. Reminds me of full synchronization objectives in Assassin's Creed, except not bad. Because, uh, Pixie, did you find that the full synchronization objectives in your missions made them less fun? Because I totally did. I think it's one of the worst parts of Assassin's Creed, and theoretically it's like that same principle, like it's an optional bonus objective that you can add to a mission, but I'd always want to get them the first time through. I wouldn't want to replay it, and uh, they would just be designed as things like complete the mission in under this time limit, or don't get detected, which means don't have any actual combat, whereas in Gears of War, using certain sets of weapons is actually playing to the strength of the game, which is shooting things, whereas avoiding combat in Assassin's Creed is like, okay, yeah, I didn't get detected, but I missed out on the fun part, which is fighting the dudes. Oh, I I like this system. I've seen it done poorly before, but it sounds like it could be good in Gears of War. Mm Mm-hmm. That's what I thought when I first played it. (laughs) Because it's one of those things, I I usually don't like things having a time limit, because I usually move very, very slowly, 
But when I came across this one that had me doing the mission in four minutes, and the first time I just completely flubbed it, I just told, <laughs> I ran straight ahead only to realize I ran right into the middle of where the enemies were spawning from, and I didn't last very long. But after that, I went back to the point just before I picked to put on that time limit, and I thought, no, I'm gonna try this again. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change my tactics, and I managed to do it the second time. So that goes back to the whole rewarding feeling of video games in the first place, and just being able to accomplish a task at hand just by thinking differently, changing your approach. Huzzah, would, perseverance. It, exactly, and I was, I was genuinely surprised when I first did that, when I first saw that happen. Because, as I've mentioned, I don't exactly have the highest opinions of Gears of War, but it seems to be taking what it's best at, shooting things, and <clears throat> adding in an interesting little aspect to it. So, if I keep playing further and finding newer ways that they change up the gameplay, I would be pleasantly surprised. So, yeah, i have actually impressed so far. It definitely, <laughs> but it definitely screams the desire for co-op because this is the kind of thing you'd want to do with friends. Just say, "Oh, over here! Oh, damn, I'm down! Someone help me! Come on, quick!" Yeah, the down but not out system is a pretty strong indicator that you should be playing this with other people. Although, like... to be fair, to be fair, the uh, NPCs around you are actually pretty quick to get you back up. That's yeah, see, I'm good. surprised to hear about that because usually, yeah. you know, you're with AI, and the AI is great on the enemies. <laughs> No, but and when it's I've... your teammates, the AI is dumb as a box of hammers. No, no, no. When I was playing, when I was playing, and I just have it on normal, I go down, and just one, one of the characters nearest me just goes over and gets me right back up. And so far, I've only had to get them up, like, two times. In fact, I've been going down more than they have. Sweet. So, yeah, Tears of War I... Judgment. Seems alright so far. Yeah, I, I am genuinely surprised. And... Like I said, it, it's taken some of the things I found a bit annoying about the original games, i.e. the overall weird texture of the game and having to switch over to your grenades and improved on them. So I will be interested to see how this goes. If nothing else, I'm just glad to see a little bit of extra color. Although a little confused as to why the handcuffed Baird and all of his team have on are glowing blue. Because it's Looks the future. Cool. It's the future, yes. Yeah, in the future, everything glows. Mm-hmm. A wizard did it. There you go. Uh-huh. So... I'm still saying you should write that book. <laughs> Gears of War, a novel. Yeah, we, we met Space Wizard, but okay. Well, there you go, Space Wizard 2. Gears of War meets the Space Wizard. Uh, to Kill a DJ is coming up. We Hooray. know almost nothing about it, except that our time slot will be, uh, we will be live at 88.1 FM WLRA, or, uh, listen, you can stream it from WLRARadio.com on Tuesday, April 2nd, which is in two weeks. Oh. Like, a week and six days from the point that this airs, but still. Um, yeah, we, we will be on from noon to 6 p.m. I know that Sen and I will definitely be on. Pyro will not, because he has stuff to do. And we might get Snake for part of it, right? Yes, I will have a better idea when we get closer. So yeah, that'll be noon to 6 p.m. Central on April 2nd. And if that uh, doesn't fit into your schedule, as we could forgive you for it not being a six-hour contiguous chunk... There will, of course, be an archival version posted at nerdtalkshow.com. What he said? We, uh, yeah, we don't know yet what we're going to be doing on the show, because we're still in the planning stages. We just picked up that time slot today. But, you know, stuff will happen. We do know what we'll be doing slightly after the show. Stuff? Probably going for a beer? Also in Las Vegas. Uh, we will be at the National Association of Broadcasters Convention in Las Vegas, Nevada. If you, by some happenstance, are going as well... Totally hit us up. Or, you know, happen to be in the Las Vegas area. Okay, if anyone legitimately walks up to me and says, hey, I'm a Nerd Talk listener, I swear I'll buy you a beer. I'll get the second you'll, round. You'll be, like, the one person. Good luck with that. So, yeah, if you're at NAB, totally mention us. I'll buy you a beer. If you're underage, I'll buy you, I don't know, what, what are kids like way? these days? <laughs> Chicken wings. If you're underage, I'll buy you a beer anyway. Yeah, I'm and not saying that. Cups. I'm not making that claim. Nerd Talk does not endorse underage drinking. It's safe faster than that, but okay. Anyway, so that those are all things. Uh, let's see. Anything else we got coming up? Nope. Uh, next week, I've already uh, pre-ordered my copy of Bioshock Infinite, which comes out next Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, wait. Sorry. We do have something for next week. Next uh -oh. week, I, out of spite, review Blackthorn. <laughs> out of spite. Yep. It's Please revenge explain. for his difficulty with StarCraft. Yep. Uh, Blizzard, deal with it. If he doesn't have the glasses, I reject what he just said. Alright, so I guess we'll wrap up for this week. Next week we'll have Blackthorn and possibly maybe uh, some Army of Two. 
and possibly Bioshock Infinite if I can get that played a little bit before then. All right. It seems weird to me that Bioshock Infinite is coming out so soon. I guess Bioshock Infinite was just announced super early, and so it feels like it's been in development forever. That's weird that it's... Also, next week, next week we will definitely have more details on To Kill a DJ. Woo! And maybe I'll finish Gears of War then. <laughs> so yes, next week's show should be... Much more interesting than this one! I wasn't going to say that, but okay. Okay, maybe I was. Anyway. Alright, so in the meantime, I'm Pixie. I'm Sam. I'm Pyrosim. And I'm Snake. And you've been listening to Nerd Talk. We'll catch you next week. Bye.